All right, so if you do this right here, then you 100% need to buy this M1 Pro MacBook Pro like, like right now. Oh, all right, what up squad? So let's go ahead and talk about the M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro. That is the best computer that you guys can get right now. But first, I wanna talk about the build quality and design of this machine. So let's talk about the chassis or the body of this computer. Now, if I'm being 100% honest with y'all, man, like I'm not the biggest fan of this design. Like I was like more of a fan of like the slim design that we pretty much got on the M1 MacBook Pro or either like the Intel machines. Now, however, I do understand that in order for them to give us like the full size HDMI ports, which I love, the three Thunderbolt 4 ports, which I love, the MagSafe 3 ports, which is just the GOAT, and the headphone jacks, which the speakers on this machine is really good, so I really haven't used that port yet, and the last, y'all, the SD card slot, which we gotta talk about because it's not the best from my personal experience, but more on that later. To me, y'all, it just seems like a really thick machine versus what we actually got in the past, y'all, but I'm conflicted because, honestly, y'all, Apple also delivered on what we wanted with giving us three Thunderbolt 4 ports, a MagSafe port, as well as the SD card slot. You know what, Let, let's actually get into that SD card slot for a second. I've been using this feature, y'all, on this machine for a couple videos, including my previous video that I did, and for some reason, it's doing this. All right, y'all, so right now, you can see here, one of the issues that I have, when I'm actually using the SD card slot, you can see right here, I've been having issues trying to get my files to actually transfer using it. Like right now, you can see it says 27 gigs, 27.3 gigs and it's taking about two hours just to transfer that footage. All right, so y'all can see right here. So now I use this dongle here and I put the SD card, I put the SD card in here and you can see now 26.66 gigs and now it's down to just five minutes, now four minutes. Whereas before, if I'm using the SD card slot, it's not allowing me actually to transfer the footage off the cards and then it reads like two hours to be able to take that footage off. So I'm not sure if it's this or is something going wrong with this uh, SD card drive, but proof is in the pudding. Y'all see it right here. I'm transferring it off of this drive. Takes about four minutes. I transfer it off of the slot. Takes about two hours. So y'all, I'm not sure if I just have a bad unit, but this has been my experience using the SD card slot on this machine. And honestly, y'all, it's something that I probably really won't be using on this machine here. And instead, I'll probably be using like a dongle or something like that, which I don't personally like having to use, but it is a much faster experience for me on this machine. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this screen because there is some good things as well as some bad things about this screen. Let's talk about the bad things first. This notch at the top of the screen, absolutely, y'all, makes zero sense to me if I'm personally being honest. I would understand if they gave us something like Center Stage, which is a feature where the camera would actually move with you and follow you and just keep you guys in frame if you're on FaceTime or something like that, that they gave us on the iPad mini, which is a dope feature, but they didn't give us that. Then I was like, well, maybe they're gonna give us Face ID in there. Nope, it's not in there either, which is cool because we do have the touch ID on the keyboard that is the wave and it is fast, but because we don't have neither of those features in it, it's just like the same camera that we got in other ones. So I don't really understand why Apple decided to give us a notch on this machine instead of just giving us the normal one like we had in the past, just doesn't make sense. But if you do what I did and add a black background, then you won't see it either. Kind of a cheat code. And if you guys make your browser or any like video or application full screen, then you also won't see it as well because it's just gonna put a black bar at the top. Now, when it comes to watching content as well as editing on this machine, y'all, and just web browsing, anything like that, this is the best screen ever on any laptop that I've personally ever used. Now, when I tell y'all, this is either on the 16 or the 14 inch, y'all, it's so damn good. With this higher refresh rate, uh, it's just an extremely smooth experience. Like y'all, it's really good and it makes me want to be on this thing like all freaking day. So yeah, y'all, this screen is a win for sure. All right, so the next thing that I actually want to talk with you guys about is the M1 Pro chip and how that's personally been for me. Honestly, y'all, there's basically nothing wrong with this chip. And I mean, y'all, it is a really good chip. And there's nothing on the market, in my opinion, that comes even close to the level of performance that I've been getting out of this machine with this chip. For example, let me tell y'all what I was doing the other day, right? I was legit on FaceTime with my guy CJ and my guy Terry while editing 4K video with a bunch of text layers, 3D effects, which killed my M1 Mac Mini machine that's 
that's right here behind me. This machine here handled it like a champ. And in that project, y'all, I had Chrome browser open. It was able to handle that like a champ, no problem. No fans kicking on, no heat like it would get on this 2015 MacBook Pro right here. Battery life, y'all, was still solid, all of that. Here's how I personally measure battery performance, like if it's good or not. If I can get through a full 4K editing session, about 30 minutes of footage, add multiple 4K clips, text titles, all down to six to 10 minutes, that's a win for sure. Now, this is taxing on the CPU as well as your GPU and would normally kill my 2015 Intel MacBook Pro in like 20 to 30 minutes. But with this M1 Pro being so efficient, y'all, it literally lasted me hours before I even had to look at my charger. Now, when it comes to the battery life, y'all, I would feel no doubt comfortable leaving my house with this machine without the need of having a charger on me to be able to edit a project on the go. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, it's that good. Now, when it comes to the speakers on this machine, I wanna talk about that real quick because they are really good. They are loud, they're punchy, and honestly, when I'm editing my videos, like you guys are watching right now, I don't really feel like the need to use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack because the speakers on this is just really good and I feel like you don't really need to have on headphones because you know, it's, it's, it's really that good. I just wish they would have gave us the option to have like a, uh, to opt out of the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to give us another like Thunderbolt 4 port. I just think that would have been dope. Now, although y'all, the M1 Pro 14 inch is not perfect, it is still a great machine. Now, my only major downside to using the 14 inch is with editing video content. I feel like the screen is just a little too small for me uh, to see like my timeline or my viewer window when editing content. It just feels really small. It's really really got me keeping my eye on that 16 inch a little bit more than I actually thought I would. Now, will I be switching to the 16 inch MacBook Pro? I don't know. I guess only time will tell. I'm knocking down all of these doors. I say, I say, I say.